Hi, I'm Tracy. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, or welcome back if you watch my videos. And if you do, I thank you so, so much. I love to upcycle clothes and turn ordinary thrifted items into edgy clothes and accessories. And I sold for many, many years. And now I just do tutorials on here for you guys. I don't consider myself a seamstress. If my fiance asked me to alter a sport jacket or something like that, I wouldn't really have the confidence to do that fine detailed seamstress work. I consider myself more of a fabric artist or textile artist, and I love fabrics, but my sewing machine is just a tool for me, like a paintbrush or a potter's wheel to help me create these visions in my head. And today, I just want to make a fun, funky little top. And I made these hair and pants. I have a tutorial on them and I'll put the link in my description, but I kind of want to do a top to go with them. And so I thrifted these two shirts. This is just like a cotton stripe. And this is kind of a calico floral pattern top. And I'm gonna use these two to try, fingers crossed, it goes with these pants. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do to this top to get it ready to work on is I want to cut some of this off. I will cut from about here down. Now everybody's top will be different sizes, so you can just kind of figure out where you want yours cut. I went to the top of my pants, I tried this on, and the top of my waistband here, I wanted that cut part to hit right about there. And then we'll be doing another layer below that. So I'm going to cut that off first. Okay, so to cut that off, I'm just laying my shirt down flat. I know I want it cut about here, and that is nine inches down from the armpit. And so I measured nine inches down from the armpit and made a mark, and I'll do the same on this side. And now I'll just take my yardstick and just kind of draw a chalk guideline to cut so that we have it pretty symmetrical. And now I'll just simply cut that off. Now what I want to do is cut the collar off. And on collars, I'm make sure I stay above that stitch line that sewed that collar on. If I go below it, then I start cutting into these arm seams and things and the shirt will start coming apart. So I wanna make sure I just stay above that stitch line. And now I'm going to just pop a few buttons off. There are these tiny little buttons at the top that held that collar. I'll just take my seam ripper and pop those off. There's one on this side also. And then on the cuff of the arm of the sleeve, there's one down at the bottom and I'm going to pop that off with my seam ripper as well on each sleeve. Okay, so now what I want to do is make a five inch band of a different fabric at the bottom of this shirt. And I'm going to use that kind of brownish floral, small floral print. And this top is wider at the bottom than this top. And that's okay for me. I wouldn't want it any smaller, that wouldn't work. But the same size or a little wider will work fine. I'll just pleat it a little bit to give it just the most subtle little ruffle effect. But what I need to do now is just cut off a five inch band from this top and it's already got a hem at the bottom so that'll save me some work. So I'm just going around now and I'm just going to take my chalk and just mark five inches Make little dashes all the way around to give me a cut line. Okay, I have this all marked. You can't see it. Kind of the chalk kind of blends in, but it's marked five inches. And I'm just going up a side seam. And I'll just follow those dashes and get my little five inch band cut out. Okay, so now what I'll do, now that I have this all cut out, 
I am going to sew it to the bottom of my shirt. So I unbuttoned it and I am just going to the edge right here where the buttons are here and I'm going to overlap it between a quarter and a half an inch and I will just sew right on top of that fabric and I will use like a gold straight stitch and I have a little bit of extra fabric, not a ton, so I may do a tiny pleat here and there as I go around. And I will go all the way around the shirt with it until it comes out on this end. So I have that sewn on, I have some extra here, and I'm just simply going to cut that off. And that's what it's looking like. Okay, so now I found this pretty brocade fabric ribbon in my stash, and I want to cover up this kind of ugly frayed edge here. So I am going to go all the way around the top sewing this on that seam that we just made. Now I will put like the center of this right over top of that seam and I will sew along the top and when I get all done all the way around I'll go back and I'll sew along the bottom. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I want to do, I just kind of threw this on because I don't really like the three-quarter length sleeves and I want them to be long sleeves and I actually want them to come down on my hands a little bit. I think that feels so cozy when your sleeves aren't too short and they kind of come down. So I just put it on, take in a ruler, and I'm going up into the shirt about quarter of an inch or half an inch because I will be sewing inside there. This is kind of my seam allowance. And then I'm measuring about where I want it down on my hand. And I got seven and a half inches. Okay, so now what I want to do is cut the sleeves off that shirt that we were working with, the floral, and cut it from the bottom up seven and a half inches and then sew it inside. And I'll show you how I sew that in a second. But, okay, so my life can't be that simple, right? I went to my shirt and realized I had already cut the other sleeve off for a different project. Now, for you, cutting two sleeves off and adding them on, easy peasy. And I had to improvise. And this is also fairly easy. But I had to do a little measuring and all of that. So what I did was just took the width of the sleeve, doubled it, added half an inch seam allowance. And I want it nine inches around on my wrist. So this will be wider than my wrist. So I had to make a little pattern. <laughs> It'll actually be like this, the wider part here. But here's the pattern. Nine inches because I want, that's the circumference I want around my wrist which is eight and a half inches, I added half an inch for seam allowance. And then the 12 inches was this measurement doubled with seam allowance, half an inch seam allowance. And then I wanted it seven and a half inches long. So that's how I got these measurements. I made kind of this, I don't know, I forgot geometry, what that shape is called. But this is my pattern. Okay, and so now all I'm doing here is just taking a piece of that shirt I'm going to turn it over and trace my pattern on the back side. It's just easier to see because this isn't so busy. So I just stuck my pattern here, traced it, and then stuck it here, traced it, one for each sleeve. And now I'm just going to cut those out. Okay, so here are my two pieces cut out. 
Now, these are not hemmed at the bottom. The narrow part is, the smallest part is actually the bottom of the sleeve. And it has a raw edge. And on this one, I don't want it to have a raw edge down on my hand. I want it to be somewhat finished. But I don't like hemming. <laughs> so I am going to take a little piece of doily. And I am going to cut like half an inch strip off the bottom of it. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my machine and I am just going to sew that along the bottom. So it'll be finished, but it won't be a hem. It'll just be this pretty little piece of doily. And I've decided to use a zigzag stitch on this. Okay, so now I have the lace sewn at the bottom. And what I need to do now is sew these clothes so that they look like a sleeve. And so you can do it the proper way <laughs> and put... If you don't want to see the seam, put right sides together, use a quarter inch seam allowance, and just sew down the side. I like to see the seams, and I am going to put wrong sides together and use a quarter inch seam allowance and a fairly small straight stitch and just sew down the side on each one. And I'll probably do a double stitch here. I want to make sure that those threads don't pop or come loose, anything like that. So I'm just going to get both these sleeves sewn. One quick tip on these sleeves, start at the bottom because it's more important that that lines up than it does up here. Okay, so I have my two little sleeves finished and I am going to prep my sleeve to attach these. Now maybe you already have a long sleeve or you like how your sleeves are and you won't even have to do any of this. I Maybe you don't even have a cuff with a button like I do, but um, I do. So what I'm going to do is I did pop off that button earlier and now I am just going to take my two sleeves and at the very tip, I am just going to put a stitch in there. You know, I'll go over it a couple times just to make sure it's nice and sturdy. Okay, so now I wanna add this sleeve to this one. And what I will do is I have my shirt right side out and I have that cuff all stitched together. And I want right sides together on this one. So this is the right side. And so this is the right side of my little floral sleeve, I will turn that inside out so that the right sides will be touching. Now I will find this inside seam. I like to line up seams. So I have a seam here and then there's a seam here. I like to line those up. And so with my sleeve that I made inside out and the bottom part that goes around my hand facing upwards, I am going to slide that over top of this sleeve. And now I will just line that up and pin it together. And I always start at that head or the uh, seams here so that I know when I sew that they're together. And I will stick a pin in there. And then I will pin all the way around. See, I have this one done already. It will look like that. Okay, so now it's time to sew these together. What I'd like to be able to do is open this up and slide it around this arm, but mine is too small. Maybe yours is bigger and you can do that because that sure makes it easier when you can do that. 
or maybe if you have a stretchier fabric, you could get it over this arm, but I cannot. So I will have to sew like this. I will have to push that bottom down and slide this under my needle. And I'm using a small straight stitch and a quarter inch seam allowance. And so I'll have to sew it around like that, just making sure I have that bottom layer pushed underneath and out of the way. It's not as fun or easy as if you could just slide it over the arm, but it definitely works. Okay, I have both sleeves all stitched, and now I will just pull this down and see how cute that is. Okay. Okay, so I know there's a lot of little steps to this, but I look at this as kind of art, and this is my canvas, and I we're just kind of making this together and showing you the different things that can be done. You may not want to do everything to your piece, but right now, when I try this on, it's a little fitted, and I want it to be like my pants, just kind of flowy and big, and so what I'm going to do is add a triangle insert in the back and that will make it bigger. And so what I did first was I took my yardstick and there, there's a seam right across here. I measured across there and I got um, 16 inches. And so I went to the middle of that, which is eight inches. So. 16 inches, and then I found the center, which is eight, and I made a little chalk mark. My triangle will not go past this seam here. It will go up almost to the seam, about half an inch from the seam. And then I measured this way, from this point down, and I got 19 inches, because I wanted to hit at the bottom of this top. So I added an extra inch, because sometimes things happen I'd rather have my insert be a little long than a little short, so I always add an inch there. And so with that measurement, the 20 inches, and I want to add 10 inches across the bottom. That'll really open that up and make it more flowy at the bottom. So that's how I got the measurements for this pattern. It's a triangle, 20 inches tall, and 10 inches across at the bottom. And now, before I trace out my triangle pattern, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that slit. So this is my line. Luckily, I have a stripe and I can just follow the stripe. And I am just going to cut up the back to my little chalk mark. Then we have it open at the back and then we'll insert a piece of fabric. Okay, so all I'm going to do here is go back to my shirt that we've been cutting off of, and this is actually the back of it, and I'm going to turn that over because it's easier to see on this side when I trace, and I'm just going to take my triangle, lay it on my fabric, I will trace it, I always use a marker, you can use whatever you want, and cut it out. Okay, so I have my big triangle cut out. And now it's time to sew it into the top. And so here's my slit, and here's the very top of it. I have it right side facing you right now. And all I'm going to do is take the very point of this triangle, and I want seams on the outside. So I want wrong sides together. So I just kind of flip this inside out to where I see the wrong side of that tip and I lay my triangle tip past that point about half an inch, and then I just sew all the way down the side, wrong sides together. Okay, so I have one side sewn, and now I need to sew this side 
to the other side of the fabric, the other side of that diamond or triangle, whatever. So I'm going to flip it around and I have this little piece that I didn't sew because I came down about half an inch or so. Now I'm going to lay right sides together there, stick it in my machine, stitch, and follow that all the way down the opposite side. And then I'll have to clip that little piece off when I'm done. Okay, so I have my insert. And that makes it a lot more flowy and comfortable for me. And now what I want to do is I went back to that little doily that I used on the bottom of the sleeve. And I cut out another little strip. This one's about maybe half an inch to three quarters of an inch wide. And now I'm going to, so we have a lot of raw edges up here at the neckline where we cut that collar off. What I want to do is take that little strip of lace and just sew it along that collar. And I wanted to stick above it just a little bit, not a lot. And then I will just lay it right here at the point. Sew it all the way around. I'll use a zigzag stitch. I'll go slightly above that collar and I'll go all the way around to the other side. And that'll just kind of finish that off. Okay, so now what I want to do is go back to my lace stash. I have some tablecloths and crochet tablecloths, things like that. And I am just going to cut out some random pieces and pin them on. So I have like a rectangle up here. Then I did a long skinny one here with a little piece over top, a rectangle. Did a little bit here, here, and there. And then on the back, I did a little square up here. Kind of a long rectangle at the bottom here. A square with like a different little piece of a rectangle over there. And now what I want to do, now that I have those all pinned on, is go to my sewing machine and I will use black thread and a zigzag stitch and I will stitch all those on. And I really want to see the black thread. So if I zigzag stitch this and I still don't feel like I can really see that stitch, I'll go over it again and that'll really darken that up. So. I'm going to go to my machine and stitch all those new lace patches that I just put on there. Okay, so now I have all my lace patches sewn on. And now what I want to do is just do a little bit of decorative stitching and some patches from the inside. So what I did was I took a piece of chalk and just drew sort of a square here. It's about one and a half by one and a half. And then I drew like a little rectangle down here. It's about one and a half maybe by one. I don't want these super huge. And I'm just going to cut these out. It's like, yikes, she's cutting the shirt after all that work, right? <laughs> so I'll just cut those squares out. And I also made a rectangle on the back right about here. It's about two inches by about one and a half inches. And I'll get all those cut out and I'll show you what I do with that. Okay, so now I just took a shirt that I had that I used on another project and just cut out some patches that I knew would fit over top of these holes. My shirt is inside out because I'm going to patch these from the inside. And so I'll just lay this over top, put four pins in, one in each corner, and then I will just stitch over top and I'll use like a gold or a brown thread and probably just a straight stitch for this one. Okay, so now I have my three patches sewn on the underneath side. And what I want to do now 
is just kind of have some fun with it. And I am going to use brown thread for this. And I am going to zigzag stitch over top of these patches. And I'll just kind of go crazy with it. I, you know, I'll make several lines, maybe a quarter inch apart. You know, you can go diagonal on top of that. But mainly I think I will just go this way and maybe put a couple this way. I'll just kind of see how I feel. But I'm going to do that with brown thread. And for each patch, I'll go above the, see the yellow here? I'll go above it, maybe half an inch, even up to an inch, just up and down, just doing what I feel. Okay, so I have my patches all finished. And my goal here is I want this to look time-worn and old, vintage. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is replacing these buttons. I will actually replace these when I sit down for the evening to watch TV. I actually love doing a little hand stitching when I'm relaxing in the evening. So I'm just going to tell you what I'm going to do here is I'll take my seam ripper and I will just pop off these white bright plastic buttons. They are just not going to go with the vibe that I want for this top. So I picked out, I only need five, but I think I have like seven vintage mother of pearl buttons here. And I've already tested all of them on the buttonholes and they all work. So when I sit down this evening, after I've already bleached it and washed it and everything, I will sew these buttons on. I will just pop those off and I'll just select what colors I want. And I really like when I have different colors. You know, I don't want them to be all white. I just think that's really fun. So I'll get those replaced later. But right now, I'll show it to you on my mannequin and then we'll talk about bleaching a little bit. Okay, so this is what it's looking like so far. I haven't replaced the buttons, and I can't wait to do that because that is just a perfect little detail to a cute little top like this, those old vintage buttons. So this is still too new and fresh looking for me. I want it to look old. I want it to look like it was maybe grandma's, and grandma repaired it and added to it and faded and worn. So I am going to take it upstairs and take you with me to my kitchen slash laundry room and we'll do a bleaching technique on it. Okay, so I just partially filled one of these little Gladware uh, plastic containers with pure bleach. Now, a lot of people say to dilute it with water. I never have, but the key, if you use pure bleach, when you're done and it looks the way you want it to look, be sure to rinse, rinse, rinse before you throw it in the washer. You want to try to get rid of as much of that bleach as you can off of your fabric before you wash it. And so I have some rubber gloves, of course, and then this is just a partial t-shirt. And I will just soak it in my bleach, wring it out a little bit. I don't want it drippy, but I do want it pretty saturated. And I will just go over this until I like it. And you never know how things are going to bleach. So it's kind of a mystery to me at this point too. This is 100% cotton, the stripe fabric, but this one's only 50%. And I don't want to lose all the color. I just want it to look faded and old and kind of mottled looking. So I'm going to start. Okay. Dipping my bleach. And I'm just gonna do a few white swipes at first just to see how it takes the bleach. And I kind of want it a little bit of everywhere. Turn it around so I don't have to lean over my bleach. I'm just gonna swipe it. I'm going to turn it over and do the same thing. 
you know, you could put a garbage bag under here to protect your surface or do it outside. I've done so much on this poor island, it doesn't really matter <laughs> regarding art. Okay, so I'm gonna keep working with this and it may take a few minutes to start activating this bleach, but I'll come back and I'll give you a, a heads up on how it's going, if I had to add more, how long it took to start activating. Okay, so after 10 minutes, this stripe fabric is not bleaching and this brown one is bleaching very nice. This is sort of the look that I wanted for this, you win some, you lose some. You just never know what a fabric's going to do, even though this is 100% cotton. I have no idea sometimes why they bleach and sometimes they don't, but I can't leave this bleach sitting on here much longer, so I'm going to go ahead and rinse it and get it in the wash, get the button sewn on after um, it's washed and dried, and then I'll come back and show it to you. Okay, so here are the buttons all finished. Okay, so here it is all finished. I love it with the pants. So comfy, one of a kind. So stick around if you'd like to see more pictures of upcycled tops that I've made and sold, you know, just for some inspiration.